Hey everyone, the virtual investor here. And today I want to talk about prices, home prices increasing in the next year. I know it's surprising, but CoreLogic believes home prices are going to increase somewhere between 3.7 to 4.6% between February of 2023 to February 2024. And where do they come up with that data and why? We're going to dive into it right now. All right. So home prices went up. 0.8% in February. So CoreLogic was calling the housing bottom. They believe that prices are going to continue to escalate. And there's a lot of different factors that are making them believe that. And they're starting to really um, take effect. And I believe a lot of this too. I don't know necessarily it's going to be 3.7 to 4.6, but I do believe we're going to at least be stable to 2% up potentially in the next year. And again, this is a uh, all across the country. This isn't just certain different markets. Like the case uh, Schiller Index, I believe they look at 19 different metros or 20 different metros, whatever it is, and they go off that. But that data, you know, it, the real estate market is a lot more than just those markets. And the big cities can be affected totally different than the rest of the country. And as we're seeing since the pandemic, that has been the case. So let's talk about what are the forces behind their belief, believing that they're going to go up. Okay, the first one is the most important. Basic macroeconomics, the first two indicators are. So inventory is only 410,000, and it's been decreasing here at the beginning of the year. And it's supposed to be increasing for the spring market because right now we're in the beginning of the peak of the spring market. So between April and June, 40% of homes are sold in the country. That's your peak buying market. And the reason it's your peak buying market is because that's when people are looking to purchase because of schools for kids. The majority of people have kids and they're thinking about schooling when, when school ends, when it starts. And that's why most closings are going to take place May, June, July in that time period. But most are sold during that time period. So that is very important here. And the other important factor that they're seeing and the trend is that mortgage rates are going back down around 6.5, 6. They're expected to be 6.3% in Q2 and drop to 5.9% in Q3. And when you get into the fives, I've talked about that on a channel before, it's kind of a magic number. Into the five psychologically with people, they feel like they can just afford so much more. And it is really a fantastic rate considering historically in this country, rates are 8%. So we're still well below historical terms. And if you would have gone back 15 years ago with the rates where they are right now, people would be ecstatic to have these mortgage rates where they currently are. So uh, rates are good. That's going to help drive the market. Inventory is very low, going to help stabilize the market because, you know, basic supply and demand. If you don't have a whole lot of properties, there's more demand out now. There's more buyer demand than there is supply of properties. The other factor, number three factor here, as why they expect the pricing to continue. So new construction is well below what it normally is and well below what it needs to be to meet demand. So new construction, again, new construction is not for your entry level buyer, right? The, the new construction houses that are made now, they're bigger houses, 3,000 plus square foot, a lot of them anywhere 2,500 to 4,500 square feet which prices out your initial first time home buyer. So if you look at that even further, let's take that next level. So that's less inventory out there for um, people to buy. That means they have to either go down to smaller ones or up to bigger homes. Mm -hmm. And in, if they're having to go back down into entry level, then that's even less properties that your regular person, first time home buyer can buy pushing prices up further for that market. And that market I consider the first level home buyer, 250 and below, 250,000 below. Really, if rates are low enough in the fives, it fits 350 and below. Um, but big factor right there, right? So we have demand, we have rent going up and rents are solid right now and they're almost a point of unaffordable. So because rents are high, whenever rates drop down, People want to go and buy. They want to own. They don't want to pay their landlord if they can own the property themselves. So you have demand right there um, from renters. And as soon as they get their credit straightened out or their income or their job long enough period of time, they become buyers. So those are big factors uh, right there. 
So surprising uptick in uh, real estate in, in February, surprising demand. We have a lot of different factors out there that um, are pushing things up. We still do have incredibly low unemployment. However, I'm going to do another video showing I think the unemployment trend is going to shift and change, which is why I'm a little more worried about the second half of the year. I'm more worried about beyond July because what happens in, in real estate, as I said before, April to June are your peak markets. We start seeing it slow down in July, August, a, a much bigger slowdown. And then September, October, November, December, all slow months, prices decrease, inventory increases during those time periods in general. Um, increases to a point and then starts going back the opposite way again later in the year as people pull properties off before the holidays, after Halloween, before the holidays. So these are things that I'm worried about. If unemployment's going to go up, it's going to um, be, there's going to be that many less buyers. Less buyers means less demand for the housing. Even though inventory is still low, you're not going to have prices being bid up which means prices that have to come back down to meet market demand. So that's why I'm a little more worried about the end of next year and in the 2024, because don't know what mortgage rates are going to do at that point, whether they stay on their downward trend or start to increase. A lot of different factors could come in and take place to make them increase. And that's something that I am definitely worried about here for the future. So the, 3.7 to 4.6 would be great. If you're an investor out there, you're looking at that, that's great. If you could pick up rental properties, you're going to gain equity on those properties. Rates are going to go down. You're going to be able to refinance, maybe pull some cash out, but at least lower your monthly payment, which is going to increase your cash flow. And if rents are stable or increasing, you're in pretty good shape overall. So that's a lot of the headwinds that we're hitting in the market and why things look solid, right? I will be doing a video uh, over the next couple of days about tail about headwinds that we're facing, not just the tailwinds. This is the tailwinds episode here where it's all the good data and all the spring data and show that we're in a positive market and things are going up. And again, I realize that's not all over the country. Wherever there's higher inventory, you're going to have um, prices falling. Wherever there's low inventory, you're going to have prices stable to escalating a little bit. So it depends on where you are. This really is market dependent. And again, it's also dependent upon generations because you have baby boomers still moving down to the Sun Belt, retiring to the Carolinas, to Georgia, to Florida, Texas, Tennessee, and different areas where they can make their dollar last longer, where they're taxed less, where they have lower real estate taxes, lower cost of living, and a better lifestyle. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. And, uh, that's where the trends are for the uh, tailwinds. Next episode will be on headwinds. We'll catch you on that one, guys.